welcome. I am so thrilled that you are here today and joining me. I am Lisa and I my channel name is Diamonds and Stitches and today I'm going to be doing the stitches part of um, of my channel and I'm super excited about it. I'm so glad that you're here. So today I'm going to do a, I think I'm going to call it like a whip um, stitch along. Yeah, that sounds good. And so uh, for Stitch Mania, for Stitch Mania, um, I chose two patterns to do. And today I'm going to work on this one. So this one is the Halloween Sampler. And it's a uh, cottage garden cottage garden samplings. Um, I love this, you guys, and I have mainly been working on this one. And um, so that's what we're going to stitch today. And then I also wanted to show you, so I stitch in hand and occasionally when I stitch in hand, my my finger gets really sore poking the needle through. And um, I don't know where I heard of these. I'm sure that I heard about them from some floss tube. I'm sure I did. Um, I just don't know which one, so I apologize. But I found these things. They are called Thimble It. How cool is that? And um, so I use those. And this is what they look like. And you just put it on your finger, don't get them wet, and it helps with the needle. So um, without further ado, let's get into stitching. So I love this pattern, um, and I have worked on it much more than the um, other one that I was working on for Stitch Mania. If you were able to watch my um, Stitch Mania um, video basically where I, I said what my plans were for Stitch Mania and um, you know how I was going to go about doing Stitch Mania this year. Uh, I have two patterns, two patterns that I'm working on. Um, last year was the first year that I started Stitch Mania and um, I had very lofty goals apparently and I didn't accomplish any of them. And um, so I decided that it was, I just needed to find some new way to do Stitch Mania that I was successful at um, and that I didn't feel horrific, that I hadn't done anything. Um, and <laughs> so anyways, I chose two patterns. I chose this one, my Halloween one, and then I chose um, a duffling kit that I bought from Hobby Lobby last year uh, during their, their clearance um, sale on so many cross-stitch kits. I got some great deals, like serious great deals. In fact, they were so great I couldn't leave them at the store. And I have kits I'm I'm positive I will never use, like in a million years, not even things that I normally would stitch. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a calling of uh, <laughs> of my kits and decide what it is that I really should keep and <laughs> figure out my life. Um, so anyways, I chose these two, the sand, they're, um, I'm sorry, the duffling kit is, uh, Christmas elves and there's three cute little elves, um, in a row. I prefer to call them gnomes, but they call them elves. So whatever. Uh, so I decided that that seemed like a good goal and the intent was that I was going to spend an hour of stitching time a day and I was going to alternate the two kits or the two uh, cross stitch pieces. Well, life happened and I did not get it done. And so this, this cross stitch piece I have worked on a lot more. 
here's the reason why I like it more. I like it more maybe because I love Halloween and if you've watched my videos in the past, you know that Halloween is my favorite of all of the holidays and even though I have a baby who was born on Valentine's Day and yes, that is a very big favorite of mine because you know that's my my little second born child, but Halloween is my all-time favorite. And so maybe it's because I'm biased towards Halloween. Maybe it's because I... Oh, let me do a count here really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, good job, Lisa. Seven. Um... And it might also be because there's so many more blocks of color, like you're just using the same color in this one, um, mostly, for the most part. Right now I'm using Raven from the Gentle Arts, let me see here, uh, the sampler threads, the Gentle Art sampler threads, and I'm using Raven right now. All of the the letters for the worrying so the the beginning of the word is done in black blackbird and the words are in raven and then randomly throughout there's some cute little candy corns and there's a big old cauldron and there's a witch flying and there's all kinds of other stuff in here and those are in different colors um of thread but for the most part I'm using the same color fairly extensively and so maybe that's what's attracting me in that cute little dufflin kit I will tell you what there's only 10 colors in that thing but I swear to Pete that all 10 of the colors are in a two inch uh, square and um, so confetti can I just say and I, I know it's not, but in my head it is. And so I have not been as excited to do it, which is, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm not happy, I guess. I don't know. So as well as I am not stitching an hour a day, I would love to, let me see here. One, I think that this is right. Let me do another quick count, guys. Counting is a skill that I have not mastered <laughs> sometimes. And um, come on, little guy, come on. Let me see here. I just want to make sure that I'm in the right. Oh, holy doodles. Yes, I am. And so anyway, I have not been able to. Um, I just haven't been able to get stitching an hour a day. Uh, I work as many of us do and, um, and I love my job and, uh, it truly, I don't work eight hours a day or anything, but between the commute and then I get home and I have kids who either want to talk to me or my grandbaby would like my time and um, and then if you have, you know, a significant other and then they want time, um, even though my significant other and I don't live together, we um, we talk, you know, via text or phone every day. And um, so, yeah, and then all of a sudden the night has has gone by and, you know, I've talk to the dogs and I've talked to the kids and and um and then the day is gone and and then I'm just exhausted and so I look at my stitching and then I feel guilty because I haven't done what I wanted to do and it's still sitting there and um you know I had these what I thought were really great goals you know, next year, I think for Stitch Mania, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say I'm working on one kit and, um, or one piece, maybe one piece. And then what I'm going to say to myself is your goal is to get it like a quarter done. And then if I get more than that done, <laughs> I'm a rock star, right? Maybe that's what I need to do. 
in order to help me motivate myself. Ah, oh, goodness, I don't know. But anyways, um, that's my Stitch Mania story. So I thought I would jump on and do a Stitch With Me because it's been a while. And funny story, I actually had done this video a few weeks ago and I went to go and upload it and there was absolutely no picture. I had sound. My voice was in the background. You could hear everything. Um, my whole entire, I think it was like a half an hour long and there was absolutely no picture. It was completely white. And I was like, oh, for goodness sakes, because when I was taping it, I saw myself, I saw the stitches, I saw everything was going along tickety-boo. And then as I was trying to upload, I got sound only. And the really other funny thingy, thingy, the other funny thing was, is that I had actually done two videos that day. One for, I do diamond painting as well. You know, cross stitch is my first love. I do diamond painting because it's fast and relaxing and um anyway i i enjoy it and i had done a video for that as well well weirdly i had a picture but no sound how weird is that right and i just got a new iphone and um after having uh iphone 5 yes i was still really really old school and I had an iPhone 5, and I dropped it so many times, I actually had, it was taped, it was taped together. And um, it was pure laziness on my part that I had not upgraded my phone, because who wants to spend two hours in the phone store, you know, downloading and updating and making sure that everything you want on your phone is still there, and so I just procrastinated for a really long time. Well, I used my phone for work and, uh, and it was getting to a point that when my phone would randomly do things, like it was, it was crazy. It would randomly like call people or it would randomly like hang up or it would randomly um, take a picture or it was the craziest thing like it was just the craziest thing and so um because i i use it for work and and uh it's kind of a necessary evil also in this day and age right to um have a phone and so i decided to bite the bullet and i upgraded quite extensively from a five and got the new 10. And so I'm still learning how to, you know, do things on it and and record and and take pictures. And um, I found the other day I was texting somebody. And, you know, on my old phone, I was able to um, text and add a picture really quickly and stuff. Well, I could not figure out how to add the stinking picture to the text. But yeah, I had to go home and Google it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, and I was going to ask my daughter, who is an iPhone expert, because she's had one probably as long as I have, but she keeps getting the upgrade. So she's really well versed on, on um, you know, what the new, how to, how to navigate the iPhone and all of its functions. And I didn't want her to think I was an idiot because... I mean, they already think that I'm an idiot. So um, I didn't want to prove them more right than they think they are. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I just decided to Google it myself. All right, let's see, where am I at? Ooh, how about knocking? Okay, let's continue on this and do knocking. Okay. Let me just pause for a moment, guys, and um, do a quick count so I can figure out where I'm at, and I will be right back. Um, thank you. Uh, seriously, counting is a skill, and I get myself lost sometimes, 
and then I find that, you know, I go along and then I look at it and go, <laughs> that doesn't look right. And so then I'm spending an hour frogging and who loves doing that? And then don't you, if you, if you end up having to frog and you're so happy when you look at your, your stitching and you've been stitching for a couple of hours, you've had some tea or coffee or wine or whatever you choose and you're happily stitching away and you're quite you know pleased with yourself and you've spent this time and then you look at it and you realize that it's one or two stitches off and you're like dang blast it come on now and then you spend you know 10 minutes 15 minutes ripping out your two hours of work and then for me, I guess maybe I find it discouraging or something. And so then I'm like, okay, well now I'm tired of this thing because you know, it's ticked me off and I did all that work on you. And how dare you not be where you're supposed to be stitches? Come on now. And, um, and so then you put it in, in a bag, like it's a naughty child in a corner. And <laughs> where's the child you save, I guess, um, after the punishment, but your cross stitch it just stays in its bag like it's naughty has no light no air <laughs> there to stay in purgatory until you know it decides that it's going to be good and and calls out to you and says come back to me i'll i'll please i'll stitch up really nice one two three four five oops one two three four Five, six, seven, eight. Is this the ninth one? I think this is the ninth one. Just hang on, guys. Sorry. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Seven down. I'm not gonna. <sighs> yeah. So um, sometimes I feel like my needle, my uh, cross stitch stuff is naughty. And um, if you have followed me on the, the floss tube and um, seen my previous um, project that I was working on, it's um, Welcome Friends uh, and kind of an Irish um, greeting. And uh, I love it. I, it's, it's a beautiful kit. It was a kit, um, came with the fabric and the threads and, and the whole deal. Mm, do I go all the way to there? Just hang on. Oh, goodness. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? Yes. One more. Um, but I had to, it was bad baby. It was bad baby and I had to put it in its project bag and um, it tell it that I just couldn't play with it anymore because <laughs> I, I actually found out that I used the wrong stinking color for a huge section. Like, and I mean huge section. And... So I got discouraged and I put it away. Mm -mm. Well, so I have a knot and it's too close in the thread for me to actually do anything with. So I'm just going to incorporate it in here, have a little bit messy of a back till I can figure this out. But anyways, yeah, I don't know if it's because I um, stitch in hand or what the case is, but dang it. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. So on this fourth one, I actually want to go over one. So yes, my little Irish sampler uh, was a little disappointed in it and it had to go in timeout. And I have, I have brought it out since and um, started on different areas because, you know, that one area was just <sighs> wrecked over, wrecked. And 
but it is, it's coming along and I, I post updates every once in a while on my Instagram page, um, about it. And, um, but since Stitch Mania started, I have been exclusively working on the two that I said I was going to work. Okay, now I have two knots. Oh, for the love of goodness and all that is holy. There we go. Seriously. I wonder, is it because I use my thread is too long? I don't know. I don't know. But see, I, yeah, I can... Mm, anyway... Hmm. Okay, and I'm probably doing something very wrong and showing way too much of my pattern. I actually had to get a, a working copy of this pattern because <laughs> I, I have already tried to wreck my original pattern. And um, so I just did a working copy for myself so I can mark it up and do what I need to do. So if you see my pattern, I apologize. You don't see all of it though, so nobody can really do anything with it. Or at least that's my hope. Honestly, I, I'm gonna be honest. I really truly don't know what the rules are. Um, I try to follow the rules um, because I believe that art theft is a horrible thing. Um, and I believe that artists, when they share their talents and gifts with the world, they should be compensated for such. And um, so I try to do what is right, and um, but I'm still learning. So if you have any uh, suggestions, of course I am always open to, um, to that and hearing um, you know, what I could do better or, um, or different. Uh, I, I'm all about constructive criticism and by constructive, I mean constructive, not, um, unsolicited, horrible criticism that just makes everybody feel awful. And, um, I like to live my life a little more positively than that. And, uh, so... I don't leave mean comments on people's uh, Facebooks or Instagrams or uh, YouTube videos. If you don't like something, you move along is kind of how I feel. And uh, yeah, so anyway, okay, what else can I talk about? Oh, goodness sakes. Um, hmm. I am looking forward to getting this pattern done. I really am. I, um, and I'm, I'm actually, I'm hoping that I'll get it done before Halloween and that I will have it framed and on my wall before Halloween. I have a really, um, cute area in my, in my, um, on my landing in my foyer which is not much of a foyer. It's a teeny tiny little strip. Okay, this is a rant. This is a rant of mine. Okay, and this is going to be kind of funny, I'm sure. But I live in a very rainy state. Okay, I live in Washington. And um, it rains, I jokingly say, 13 months out of the year here. Um, and I never quite understand this. Builders build homes that have the dinkiest foyer to get into. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. It rains here. If you have a family, so my house is a four bedroom house and we had five, six people uh, in our family. When I bought the house, we had five and I was pregnant with my fourth child and um but when you have you know two grown adults and then three small children who have rain boots and rain gear and backpacks and all kinds of stuff and you seriously have this teeny tiny landing for everybody to get to and then if you live in a split level so I sort of I guess my house is a split level I guess they would call it so right off of the door you know are stairs that you either go up the stairs or down the stairs 
um, to whatever room. And they're carpeted. And so how ridiculous is that? Is that not only do you have this teeny tiny landing, but that if you're gonna go anywhere, you are tracking muddy boots or, or you know, drippy stuff onto carpet. Could we, I don't know, this makes sense to me. Um, oh, sorry, counting. Let's have a little stop for just one moment. Um, yeah, but for the love of Pete, like how about either a bigger foyer or, um, no, seriously, just a bigger foyer, like a bigger porch area that has an overhang to it maybe so that people when they're coming in, you know, and they can't get in the house right away that they have like a dry spot to like get themselves ready to get in the house. Oh, goodness sakes. It, seriously, it is a massive pet peeve of mine. <laughs> So anyway, going back to my wonderful foyer, um, and I'm Canadian. And so in my house, when you got in the door, you took your shoes off. You just took whatever was on your feet off. And um, back in the day, my kids would wear slip, or we would all wear slippers, you know, because that's where you wear, in, that's what you wear in Canada. You put on your slippers once you walk in the house, okay, maybe that's old fashioned. I don't know. But that's what we used to do. We had slippers that you put on when you took off your shoes. And then, um, yeah. And so my children were taught to take their shoes off at the door. Well, I'll just tell you with two adults and, um, and three little children, there's a lot of chaos trying to get into a house. <laughs> and taking off uh, footwear and putting on um, their slippers. Um, as time went on, they stopped. They stopped wearing slippers. Okay, let's do a little, a little, un, untwisty. And yeah. So okay, back to. I'm sorry. Rant over. I have this cute little. Um, area in my foyer that makes it even smaller but it's a it's a little um cabinet that I picked up and uh that we put storage you know shoes um one two three four five six seven one two three four five six one more seven um and, you know, the dog leashes and uh, all the dog gear, poop bags, that kind of thing. And on the top, like it's got a, you know, it's got a top to it. So it's a cabinet. It's a little cabinet. And, um, and above it is kind of where I do like a seasonal display. And so that's kind of what I'm hoping is that I will have this with this done. And then of course, um, I have a lot of decorations for Halloween and I will be doing a cute little, a cute little vignette on that cabinet as well as, um, around the mirrors and, and things that are in that, in that area. And I, I'm hoping that this picture will end up there as well because um, it seems like a really perfect place for it to go. So that's my plan. And it's only, what, mid-May? What is it? The 17th today? Yeah, the 17th. And, or it's 18th. I don't know. I don't even know. Um, but that's the plan, is that that's, that's hopefully what I will try and do with this. Okay, now let me count two, four, five. Two, four, five, yes. Five. Okay, did I just make too many? One, two, three, four, five, six. You guys, I made one too many. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I made one too many. Okay, I am back. I just fixed it. How silly is that? Off by one. Thankfully, it wasn't a very big 
um, amount and this didn't end up being bad baby in a bag. <laughs> Gosh, that's horrible. Okay. Moving on. Um, huh. What else? What else? Have you guys, you guys, I'm telling you, these people on um, Stitch Mania, you are such awful, bad, terrible, 100% influences. Like, oh my goodness. I enjoy, like, going on floss tube in the evening. That's my other thing. That's why I don't get anything done, quite honestly, is because I start social mediaing and, um, and I get stuck in, you know, what's going on in social media land and, <laughs> and seeing everybody's pretties and things. And so, <laughs> oh goodness sakes, the patterns that I have been seeing are just so pretty. And, um, you ladies, I tell you, and gentlemen, and gentlemen, um, you rock, like, oh my gosh, the, there's so many beautiful patterns that I've been seeing this Stitch Mania, well, last Stitch Mania too, that's how I got into trouble, is because, um, everybody was revealing their Stitch Mania plants, and I'm like, oh, I like that pattern, Ooh, I like that pattern, squirrel, oh gosh, gonna, gotta buy that, find that, put that in my cart, you know, buy that one, and um, with such easy access, okay, so I'm I'm an old cross-stitcher, right? So I've been doing this for 30-ish years, and um, I started as a teenager. If you've followed me, you've heard my story about how I started. My aunt told me that I was really quite pathetic in so many words, and... Uh, and I picked it back up when I was pregnant with my first child because I really wanted to do a little something that was meaningful for his room and um, and his pregnancy was not uh, awesome. That's a story for a very different day. And so anyways, you know, back in the day, there was very limited... Um, cross-stitch kits that you could find like we didn't did we even have Michaels back then I don't even know if we did or not quite honestly um I know that like Woodward's back home um would have like an art section so um uh what is it like I'm trying to think of what kind of store it would be like or um there was in my in my shopping center close to my house, there was a craft store um, that had, it was mostly yarn and that kind of thing, but then she had a section, a very small section of cross-stitch kits, mostly pamp like the little booklets, right? So, um, so, you could buy that. And then she did have, I, I will say, if memory serves, she had one of those beautiful cases that just had this huge amount of DMC thread in it. And that's all you could really find. Like you could get a kit um, that had, you know, the, the fabric in it and a pattern and the threads and a needle and like my very first kit, I, I want to say I bought it at, okay, what was it called? What was the store called? It was in the mall. So there was a Woodward's and a Sears and a something else. Oh my gosh, what was the store called? It had groceries and, um, it, it, yeah, anyways, anyways, I digress. Sorry, um, I just had a small little walk through memory lane for myself. Um, one, two, three, second here. Is that three different? Three more. Um, so anyways, they had like a little art section as well. And, uh, 
the bay, maybe the bay Woodwards. And then there was like some little teeny tiny craft stores that were around. So I bought, you know, a couple of things. One was that kit that I bought for my son that was basically a little sampler, you know, little name sampler and stuff with his birth date and that kind of thing. And then, um, and then I also got this pamphlet. I, I really thought that I was something else. And I bought a pamphlet that had a cherub, a cross-stitch cherub in it. And so I picked up, um, and, and back in the day too, um, our, our fabric, the Ada cloth, it used to come all teeny tiny folded in, a in a, in a little cellophane bag kind of thing. And it, it was almost like it was like handmade, you know, the little tag that went with it, um, that said what the fabric was. Charles Craft, that's what it was. Charles, I think that's what it was. Charles Craft. And so um, <laughs> I remember when it used to come in a bag and then they put it in kind of more of a, a packaging, like a little um, more uh, heavy, heavy paper, not quite cardboard, but heavier paper, um, folded packaging, uh, with their, with their logo and, and that kind of thing on it. I, oh my gosh, again, another little trip down memory lane. And so I bought like a Charles Craft, um, cloth and, or fabric and, uh, picked out all of the DMC threads that it called for. And I did, I made my mom that cherub and, um, and she has framed it in this gorgeous frame, like gorgeous antique gold leafed. So I'm, I'm very shabby chic country farm style, love natural color wood, that kind of thing. My mom is very, um, Victorian artsy, um, beautiful. Uh, we have very different styles. And so she, uh, put a put this cherub in a gorgeous mat and frame and um she was really quite proud of me and so she kind of inspired me to keep going and and uh the funny thing is as I look at that cherub today and um she has it hanging in the guest room in her house and it's pretty but now when I cross stitch I you know I didn't know about tension and I didn't know um I, I'm pretty sure that uh, some of my stitches were wonky do that you know some of them were top left to right and then some were topped right to left who the heck knows anyways um, yep and, <laughs> and but she loves it she, uh, maybe because I'm her daughter and um, she she was just so proud of me and she has asked for more pieces, you know, and I have never, I have never actually finished anything since I own a lot. I just haven't finished anything. So yeah. And of course, you know, my mom is getting up there and, uh, as am I. And I have all of these patterns and all of this fabric and oh my gosh, oodles and oodles and oodles of threads. And uh, I just, I my children have no idea what the value of this stuff is. And I'm just afraid that they're going to either, you know, take it to the dump or just say to the first person who's willing to buy it, it's yours. Give us a hundred dollars. We're good. <laughs> I will haunt them forever. Forever. Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. But yeah, feeling a little chippy, I think. It's a Friday. The weekend is on us and, and, uh, we have some fun plans for the weekend. Uh, we are doing a little mini photo session uh, out here. It's supposed to rain, cats and dogs. And 
so that should be good times. I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, I'm back. Sorry again for that. I, uh, I don't know why I'm getting so many knots. I, uh, I think that I'm not doing too horribly on the size of my thread and trying to keep it untangled, but I don't know. So anyways, yes, my daughter and I live together and um, she's the one who has my little grandbaby and uh, who is not little, she is eight. Well, still technically little, but she's eight going on 28. And she just turned eight last week. And uh, we do a lot together. We just don't take any, we haven't had family pictures done or anything like that. And so we are going to do a, a little mini session with um, my significant other, her significant other, and uh, and the little the little. And we're gonna do a three generation picture, which I'm very excited about because I just think that um, you know one day when my granddaughter, who I call PP, that's not her name, but uh, we have always. Uh, referred to her as PP on social media, capital P, capital P. Um, it goes for either princess pants or pretty princess or pumpkin, uh, pumpkin pants, whatever, whatever acronym <laughs> we, we choose to use at the time. And so I'm very excited about it because I, uh, I remember, um, I was an adult, however, but my mom, my grandma, and I did a three-generation picture, and I just cherish that. Um, I remember the day. It was before my grandma got really, really sick, and um, and I loved my grandma. I just, I adored my grandma. She was a lady in every sense of the word. She was elegant. She smelled beautiful. She was one of those ladies that, you know, when she worked in the yard, she had work, yard clothes. She had Sunday to go to church clothes. She had, uh, you know, her, um, her house clothes that she would wear. She wore an apron when she cooked and did the dishes. And, um, yeah, I even remember, I mean, she was so stinking cute and I'm so not like this. I, I, <laughs> I was never like this. Um, but she would change her purses, you know, according to the season or when she was going out, if, you know, she, it didn't match her outfit. She had, she had a purse that would um, suit better and she would just take everything out of it. And she had like little gloves that she wore. Um, and so the gloves fit into her purse and she always had a lipstick and, um, and a comb just in case. And, oh my gosh, she was just genteel. She was beautiful and genteel and she loved my brother and I. And, um, we just, my grandma was a lovely, lovely lady and I miss her dearly. And so when I look at that three generation picture of my mom, my grandma and I, um, I just cherish it. I hope one day that PP looks back and cherishes those memories as well. Um, when my daughter was little, we also did a three generation picture. My mom, myself, and my daughter, we did a three generation picture just before um, we moved to the States. Uh, my ex-husband and myself with the three kids at the time and uh, we moved for his job and <clears throat> and uh, so just before we moved we had a three generation picture done and um, so it's just it's just really kind of cool I my mom is still alive however she lives in Canada she lives in Toronto. We just haven't been able to see each other. So it's really cool to me to not only do I have a three generation picture with my mom, my grandma, myself, but then I have a three generation picture with my daughter, my mom and myself. And then I'm going to have a three generation picture with my granddaughter, my daughter and myself. And so it's just, 
I, I don't know. I'm, I'm one of those little sentimental people and I really cherish family. Um, my family means a lot to me, even though I don't always talk to them as often as I would like. Uh, they have different time zones and everybody has different lives and sometimes I just, you know, that's no excuse. Tomorrow is not a given. And so I think of that and then, you know, I, yeah, no excuses. I just, I say that to myself all the time, but anyway. I love my family very, very much, and um, thankfully, my little immediate family is very close, and uh, three of my four children still live with me. My oldest is 28, my youngest is 19, and then my granddaughter lives with me as well, and, um, and we're just a, you know, we fight, yes, we do, um, and we disagree with each other and we have different goals in life but fundamentally um, I've taught my children that family is everything and um, and we stick together <laughs> and yeah so um, and they're all sweet good kids um the only one who has decided to go out on his own is my second son that's my valentine baby and uh he's always been kind of the black sheep of the family and he's decided to uh pave his a different route in life and um and that's okay he is he's more than welcome to it and he just knows that his mom is always there loves him and that's what matters so I am now done that G. Look at that. I now actually have two, three whole words. Three whole words, you guys. Look at that. Goblins knocking in October. Oh my gosh. I am so proud of myself. Oh, here, let's see. Can you guys see that? I am stinking proud of myself. Now, can you guys tell that these letters, the small letters, are a different color than the capital letters of the word? See, to me, until you truly look at it, like up close, they honest to Pete look the same color. But on the pattern, on the model in the pattern, um, the capital letters are blue, like kind of like a um, royal, uh, yeah, kind of like a metallic royal blue. Um, uh, and then of course, variegated. And so when I started doing, is it Blackbird? Is it Blackbird? I think it's Blackboard. Blackboard. And while it kind I mean, next to Raven, yeah, they are totally different colors. Like, do you see, uh, I don't know if that shows up. Does that show up at all? They do look like different colors, at least. Okay, so close up, they do. But on here they don't and so I'm hoping that as more maybe more color goes in here it will become more apparent I don't know anyways I'm loving it I am I'm, I'm not gonna lie I love it I'm so happy with this so I am going to end here for today thank you so much for joining me I hope to do um, a video a week of uh, whip I'm gonna call it work in project work in progress stitch along that's what I'm going to call it and um and I think I'm going to just exclusively work on this one and then when I have this one done I will go to the Alps because those are the two that I've committed to do for stitch mania and I just I want to get them done in the year so I am going to stitch mania all mania through until the two are done so I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I will see you in a week with a new video. All right. Have a great one. Bye-bye.